Hey y'all, welcome back. Number 54 says a rock is thrown straight up into the air from a height of four feet. The height of the rock above the ground in feet, t seconds after it is thrown is given by this, uh, this function, so negative 16 t squared plus 56 t plus four. For how many seconds will the height of the rock be at least 28 feet above the ground? So just to kind of visualize the scenario here, we've got uh, this quadratic, which when you graph it is a parabola, and it starts at four feet. So basically, you've got a rock going up and coming back down. Okay, it's probably a little bit more exaggerated than this. But uh, the question is saying, how long will the rock be above 28 feet? Or at, not necessarily just above, but at least 28 feet. So really, we're looking for the time um, from here to here. You know, how long is this time? The rock goes up, it crosses, it goes above 28 feet, and then comes back down. And so what we need to do is figure out, well, when exactly is the rock at 28 feet? And then we can subtract this time minus this time to find the difference. So like, for example, if the rock um, was above 20, when it hits 28 feet, if this is 1 and comes back down and this is 4, then we, we can say that the rock was above um, 28 feet for three seconds, just to kind of throw some numbers out there. So to find when this happens, we're going to set up an equation where we want to know when is the rock's height, which is represented by this quadratic equation, when is it equal to 28? So essentially we just need to solve a quadratic equation here. And we can do that either with factoring or with the quadratic formula. Um, if the factoring turns out to be a little too complicated, uh, then we'll just kind of go back to uh, the quadratic formula, but I'm going to see if we can't factor this. So the first step I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract 28 from both sides. Uh, I'll make a little note of that. Anytime you're solving a quadratic, you do need to have the equation be equal to zero. That way we can use the zero product property when we factor, or like if you're going to use the quadratic formula, you need it equal to zero anyway. Okay, so I subtract 28 from both sides, and now I have negative 16t squared plus 56t. Uh, let's see, 4 minus 28 would be negative 24 equals 0. Now, I do want to try to factor this, but before I do that, I'm going to try to make each of these numbers as small as possible. So I'm going to divide out, um, hopefully, as, you know, as big a number as I can think of. Uh, I'm going to start by dividing out... Hmm. I mean, they're all even, so I know I can divide by 2. Can, are all these divisible by 4? I think so. So let me start with 4. Could be that all these are divisible by 8. 56, is that divisible by 8? Um, actually, I think it is. Let me double check in my calculator real quick. 56 sounds like that's divisible by 8. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to divide everything by 8. And because um, uh, 24 is definitely divisible by 8, 16, 56 is as well. But I'm actually going to divide everything by negative 8 because when I factor, uh, the factoring will be easier if that leading coefficient is positive. So uh, I'm going to force that to be positive by dividing both sides by negative 8. Um, so that gives me 2t squared. Uh, minus 7t plus 3. So negative 16 divided by negative 8 is 2. 56 divided by negative 8 is negative 7. And negative 24 divided by negative 8 would be positive 3. So here we've got a little quadratic. We do want to factor this. Um, so uh, you could probably factor this in your head if you're you know, decent at factoring. But if not, let me kind of show you um, one way how you can set this up to factor it. And that is, uh, I'm going to use the little box method here. So I'm going to make a little two by two box here. If you haven't seen this method, um, I would just Google either in YouTube or just in, uh, you know, on the old Google machine, uh, <laughs> uh, the box method for factoring. Um, but I'm, I'll talk you through it here. So in the top left box, we're going to type, we're going to write two t squared. That's the first term. 
And then the constant term three, we're going to put right here. Um, and so what we're trying to do is we're trying to come up with two factors. Here would be like something uh, uh, plus some. Oh, well, I can't put it up there. But basically what we want to do is uh, we come up with terms that when we multiply the column by the row, we get what's inside the box. Okay. Um, so we'll come back to that. In these two squares here, we want to come up with two terms that add up to negative 7. And as you might imagine, there are infinitely many different values to where you could do that, right? Like we could have negative 5t uh, plus negative 2t, or we could have 10t minus negative, uh, uh, minus 17t. There's a lot of different combinations that could work. And so to find that kind of special combination that's going to work for this factoring, um, we need to come up with two numbers that multiply um, to give you the product of A and C here. So like here we have 3 times 2. Okay, so we need two numbers that multiply to give me 6. And we need two numbers that have a sum, which is negative 7. So we need to add up to negative 7. Okay, so this work up here, this little x that I'm, I've drawn is really just to kind of help keep my work organized and, uh, and help me come up with these two numbers. So two numbers that multiply to 6 <clears throat> but add up to negative 7. Um, let's see if we can come up with those. So since they multiply to be a positive but add up to a negative, that means both numbers have to be negative. So we could do like negative 2, negative 3, but that doesn't work to add up to negative 7. Aha, I've got it. Um, we could do negative 6 and negative 1. So negative 6 times negative 1 equals positive 6, and negative 6 plus negative 1 is equal to negative 7. So these two numbers, these two sort of special numbers here, um, are going to be the numbers that I put as coefficients of t in these other two boxes down here. So I'm going to type in this box negative 6t, and over here negative 1t, or just negative t. Okay, so to come up with the factors, um, what I need to do next is find the greatest common factor of each row in each column. So the GCF, or the greatest common factor of this first row, would be 2t, right? 2t uh, squared is divisible by 2t, and so is negative 6t. The GCF of this second column uh, is going to be 1. Potentially, we could factor out a negative 1. We'll see if we need to at the end. Um, the GCF of this first column is going to be t, and the GCF of this second column is going to be 3. Now, we do need to go back and think about our negative signs here. Typically, when you, find, when you factor out a GCF and your leading term is negative, you actually want to factor out a negative number. So I'm going to go ahead and change this to negative 3 and this to negative 1. And now I want to test to make sure that I've got all my numbers correct. Like I said before, each column uh, times each uh, row should give you what's inside the box. So like 2t times t is 2t squared. That checks out. 2t times negative 3 is negative 6t. Yes. t times negative 1 is negative t. And negative 3 times negative 1 is 3. So if you fill out this box, what we've just found are the two factors that multiply to give you 2t squared minus 7t plus 3. And they're going to be these expressions along the top and down the side. So one of my uh, factors is going to be t minus 3, right, t minus 3. And the other one's going to be 2t minus 1. Now that we've got this factored, we can set each factor equal to zero and solve them independently. So I'm just going to draw some arrows here. And we're allowed to do this because of something called the zero product property, which states that if you have a product that equals zero, so you have two numbers that multiply um, 
to equal zero, then at least one of those numbers have got to be zero. Could be both, but at least one. Okay, so now we're gonna set, we've set each one of these equal to zero, so now we're gonna solve. For this equation over to the left, we're just gonna add three to both sides, so we get t equals three. And here we will subtract, I'm sorry, we will add one and then divide by two, so we get one half. So that means that the two t values for when the rock is at 28 feet are going to be at one half, which is going to be this, uh, um, this time right here, and then also three. So to answer this question, um, which if you recall, going got, kind of got lost in the algebra there, but uh, going back to the context, it's saying for how many seconds will the height of the rock be at least 28 feet off the ground? So the question is now, you know, how long is it from one half of a, uh, half of a second to three seconds? So to figure out what that time differential is, we are going to subtract three minus one half. Uh, three is the same thing as six halves. So this would equal five halves um, or 2.5. So our answer for number 54 has got to be C. And uh, that's it for 54. I would definitely, if you're a little shaky on the factoring, um, visit some other videos that kind of go into a little bit more detail on how you factor. There are other techniques, um, but using this X and box method um, is just one of them. Okay, so I just kind of went over how you, this one way how you can do it, but there are lots of other ways. So uh, thanks for watching, and y'all have a great day.